Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Thursday, it's March the 21st, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we do, picking up now in the last part of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And this is a very important section because it describes to us of how we're made in the image of God. How are we in the image of God? Is it, does he have a bodily form? I mean, we see the Lord Jesus Christ. He come and took on flesh. So is that what the image of God is? Well, I believe the scripture is very clear here that teaches us uh, how we've been made in the image of God. And he picks up in verse 23 and says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And that can't happen unless God has, been, unless God has raised us from the dead, if, uh, unless he has quickened us by his spirit. Because we are dead in our trespasses and sins, and that's how we marred the image of God. And that's how uh, when uh, Adam chose to rebel against God's uh, truth, um, that, uh, that the Bible says, In the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. And so when we were first created by our original parents, Adam and Eve, made in the image of God, we were made as a trinity, like God, a trinity in the way God would make us. And there's, there's a trinity in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, when, when Adam took of that fruit, he, told, he was told, in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, he didn't die physically that day, so, though certainly he was on a journey to death, but he didn't die that day. But when God says, surely, in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die, he did die. And the question is, is how did he die? He died in his spirit. He died in that part that was mostly connected to God. We have the body and we have the soul, which gives us a, a house to dwell in and a mind, will, and emotion, but we don't have no connection to God. Matter of fact, when we're dead in our trespasses and sins, we're enemies of God uh, rather than the friends of God. But God comes along, and in First Thessalonians, he's trying to show us over and over and over again that through the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been brought unto life, and now you are to be sanctified in the truth of God's word. And he says, May he sanctify you wholly. I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so there you have the trinity of man, just like the trinity of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You have here very plainly and clearly spelled out for you. May, your, may God, uh, uh, I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be blameless uh, unto the coming of of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's his goal. That's his aim. So that when we stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, we can say, God, we follow wholeheartedly after you. And though we weren't perfect, you didn't ask us to be perfect. You asked us to strive to walk in the will and the work and the way of the Lord uh, of the word. And, and we strove to do that by the power of your spirit that quickened us, made us alive and brought us together. And, uh, and that's, my, that's my entry. It's because of Jesus. It's because of what he did in the forgiveness of my sin that I stand here today. Not because I was perfect, but because I followed after the perfect one. And, uh, and I pursued uh, uh, sanctification uh, and, and, in and through Christ and him alone. That's it, period. Uh, but he says he wants to preserve us <laughs> blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So while we're not sinless, we can be blameless. We can repent, as he said, confess your sin. He is faithful and just to forgive you your sin. He's not asking you to be perfect. He's asking you to put your faith and trust in the perfect one. Now, as you are doing that, you are to be working out in your life holy sanctification. That's This is clear all over Scripture. Uh, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearances of evil, right? And May the may the God, may the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. So it is it is a journey that we're on in Christ until he comes. And he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Because notice what it says here in verse 24. Faithful is he that called you. Faithful is he that called you. And then he says, who also will do it. Who also will do it. He's going to sanctify us. Either we can... Uh, as a followers of, of Christ, we'll either voluntarily submit to uh, his his uh, his sanctification, or he's going to uh, he's going to mandatorily put us through uh, that uh, sanctification. Even though in all areas of life, uh, life presents itself for sanctification to be worked out, and people give pray for patience, which I don't ever rarely recommend. But if you pray for patience, because you know one of the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience. Um, 
He's going to give you an opportunity to sanctify yourself and be patient. I mean, and so uh, so we want to be careful in that regard of what we're asking for because he's going to give us an opportunity to work that out in our lives. He's going to work out sanctification. But if uh, if we if we if we fail to do that uh, on our own, then certainly he will put those those things into our lives to correct us. And I'm thankful that he does. And he says, faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. He's going to do it. He's going to bring us there. And he says, brethren, pray for us. <laughs> and certainly uh, that's a plea that we can all uh, uh, connect with. Please pray for us. We need all the prayer we can get. Amen. And then he says, greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. Greet all, greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. And this helps to, uh, it would be like a, handshake, I guess you could say, in some regard today, but a holy kiss, uh, when, whenever you uh, met a brother and you, uh, as a man to a man, a holy kiss, uh, that's that when you see them on one side of the cheek and then they bounce to the other side of the cheek, and the reason that they do that is supposed to be a way of humbling ourselves, humbling ourselves, and recognizing that we are all in the same family of faith, that we're a work in progress, that I'm being sanctified, I am being uh, uh, I have been justified, I'm being sanctified, and someday soon we're going to be glorified. Amen. And he says, And I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. So we have been following in that command every single day. We come here and we open up our Bibles and we and we read this word. This, is, this book is um, most needful for the believer to go through and be reminded of the promises of God. And then he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That is my prayer today, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you as you carry out your daily task. And I pray if you get the opportunity, you'll share the good news that Jesus Christ has overcome sin and death. He's also overcome all this crazy mist in the world. He's coming back. He's going to come and receive us in the clouds. We're going to go up there and we're going to be with him forever. Um, uh, and, 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 and come back down here and rule and reign on the brand new earth that he's going to make. It's going to be glorious and grand. And, uh, and I pray that, uh, that you're connected and that you're walking in holy sanctification. So go forth today mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and be encouraged.